Hi, I'm Hazel. It's Saturday today, which makes it time to sit down and catch up on the WoW News of the Week, what I've been up to, and answer some of your questions. This week, there was a whole round of new interviews with Blizzard devs by people such as Mr. GM, Asmongold. There was a Twitter space hosted by Taliesin and Evatel. Uh, lots and lots of interesting discussion to listen to, so if you have time and you want to put something on while you're playing, I would highly recommend uh, playing recordings from any and all of these interviews while you're playing if you are interested in the logic behind, like, design decisions in WoW, why they do things, and kind of where we're going next. In this video, I want to round up and highlight the biggest pieces of news that came out of those interviews. First of all, mages, priests, and rogues are going to become available to all races in patch 10.0. This means exciting new combinations such as Tauren rogues, Drenai rogues, you know, sneaky hooved people, uh, what else? There's going to be Orc Priests, there's going to be Tauren Mages. Those classes were already available to almost every race in the game, but uh, Tauren Rogues in particular is a real highlight. Another big one, Ian has come out and said that returning to Master Loot is a long-term goal. So this is not necessarily something that's slated for Dragonflight. We don't know exactly when this would happen or what it would precisely look like, but it's something that they want to work towards. They acknowledged in the past in a video they recorded with IGN, they were not like rapturously happy with personal loot. And Ian expounded on that more saying that there's upsides and downsides to all the different loot systems, but ultimately they're not really happy with personal loot as it is today. And getting back to Master Loot is a long-term goal. I am personally really curious to see what this looks like eventually when they do get there, um, if it's like just a straight reversion to what we used to have, or if there's going to be options that take aspects from both systems. Maybe there could be a version of it that's like personal loot, but with like full and unrestricted tradeability. I've always been somebody that's not terribly sour on personal loot, just because for my own personal playing situation, um, personal loot has meant less work for loot councils. You know, loot gets out faster, you know what you got or didn't get much more quickly. Um, less potential for loot drama in groups. It has meant a safety guarantee for players that pug in raids that they still have their fair shot at things, even if the uh, people putting together the group have other ideas. On the other hand, the full control that Master Loot gives is something that many, many raid teams have wanted back since pretty much the instant that it left. So this is likely to be a popular piece of news coming out from Blizzard. On the topic of loot and tier sets, they talked about what a creation catalyst might look like for Dragonflight. Um, noting that there's nothing set in stone and that it certainly wouldn't be like a copy pasted creation catalyst. They don't want to have to do like a new little doodaddle every tier for you turning items into tier, but they like the functionality of it. And Ian kind of mused that that's something that could work really well on the profession system, like taking your raid helmet to a blacksmith and having them convert that into a tier set item. Professions could be a really good fit for providing that like bad luck protection for collecting tier sets. I was really happy overall with the creation catalyst, the way that it stands now. My only complaint is I think they could have launched it like weeks to, to a month earlier. I feel like it came a little bit late, but I'm very happy to have it now, not only for bad luck protection for getting like your set bonus online, but also for collecting the, uh, the transmog of the rest of the tier set. Sometimes there's just like a piece that will not drop for you out of raid and you're looking at your appearance journal just like, please. And it's nice to be able to take other items and then turn them into something that has the mog that you want so you can actually complete your set and wear it. We also heard that there are no plans for a mission table in Dragonflight. I personally felt nothing when I heard this news, which probably means that it's the right choice. Uh, mission tables have been kind of unpopular since the start, even if they are a great source of raw gold in the game. A lot of people have found them very profitable, and they've had kind of a reduced footprint every expansion that they've been in since since Warlords. Like, they were huge in Warlords, and then they were there and pretty big in Legion, and then they were much reduced in BFA, and now the Shadowlands mission table that we have is basically completely optional, and it's mostly just kind of a gold-making thing now. I am kind of curious to see what happens to the WoW Companion app after this, just because the mission table has been very central to the WoW Companion app, and I'm wondering if they just kind of let it fade off into obscurity, or if they repurpose it for something maybe more like uh, like a like a refreshed mobile auction house would be kind of cool. You used to be able to do that back in the day. Speaking of mobile apps, the Warcraft mobile game announcement is happening very soon. It's scheduled for May the 3rd. There are lots of rumors floating around out there on what that could look like. Gaming journalist Jason Schreier posted that they are working on a Pokemon Go-ish game as well as a Clash of Clans-ish game with the Warcraft IP, so this upcoming one could be either one of those. Uh, interested to see if that turns out to be true. There's been a pretty reasonable amount of interest from the community, at least that I've heard, uh, and we will see what they've got next week. 
In more near future WoW stuff, we now know how you are going to be able to get the Slime Cat mount. It has been data mined for Shadowlands Season 4 that you need to complete all three of the Fated Raids in order to get uh, Sir Jigglesworth. There is no model for it yet that I can show you, but they don't need to show one just yet. I'm already sold. Uh, also, we heard that if you complete those raids on Mythic difficulty, if you complete the Faded raids in Season 4 on Mythic difficulty, you're going to get basically challenge mode ports, but to the raid entrances, which is cool. And in my life this week, my raid group finally killed Heroic Rigalon, and we are now progressing on Heroic Jailer. I must say that as a healer, Rigalon involved a lot of planting my feet firmly in the ground and bombing heals onto people, which was lovely. And then Jailer involves a lot of not that, you know, like there's pillars breaking line of sight, there's holes to jump into, there's run in, run out, you know, <laughs> do the hokey pokey and turn yourself around. And it's very, it's, it's a much more hectic fight and a little more frustrating to heal than Rigalon, but I guess not everything can be a just, you know, plant your feet and cast kind of fight. It's probably going to be a little bit before we down Heroic Jailer because I believe we have some like absences coming up in our raid, but I am excited to do it eventually because the Carsonized Zerat Steed, the Ahead of the Curve mount, is like really pretty unique this time around. I'm really excited for it. Also, I have begun digging into protoform pet crafting because I feel like if I just pretend that I'm done with protoform mount crafting, then maybe Lehuvim will finally drop me his dumb bobby pin for the last time. I need one more of them and I've been killing Lehuvim on three difficulties a week and he will not give it up. That brings us to questions from this week. Sabaticos Valor wants to know, do you or anybody else know if account bound gold is coming? So this is something that I have never heard of, um, and it would really surprise me because you can already currently trade gold between your characters on one server, at least within one faction, and they might relax it so that we could potentially trade like cross-faction within one server in the future, especially with like cross-faction instance content and like a shared auction house. That wouldn't surprise me too much, but if you mean like cross-server gold moving, that would really flabbergast me just because I feel like that's a real dangerous thing to do. It just seems like you're going to get like the super goblins channeling gold out of certain servers and into other ones in like a one-way street, which I'm not an economist, but it's probably not going to do anything good. And I would be surprised if they did that. And Anthony wants to know, are you at all disappointed that the Drakthir are bound to what looks like human, female, and male blood elf? I was so excited to make a cult here and male Drakthir until it was shown that they've restricted their mortal forms. So my very limited understanding, I guess I should answer the question. I'm not terribly disappointed, but it takes a lot to disappoint me. You pretty much have to promise me dessert and then change your mind. Uh, my understanding is that Drakthir are fairly different from like standard issue dragons, even though it would have been really cool if we could have picked like a gnome or a goblin or like you're seeing a Kul'tiran form for the visage form. Um, Drakthir visage forms seem very much unique and specific to them. And while they do kind of look like humans, it's not like the Worgen thing where it's literally the same human customizer. And I'm excited about the customizations that they show showed for the Drakthir visage forms. I think there's going to be a ton of options. And that has been the week. Thank you very much for watching. If you have a question for a news video, please pop it in the comments and include the word question to help me find it. Appreciate you guys, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day.